So the Los Angeles Times reported that traditional masculinity is officially labeled harmful by the American Psychological Association. And this is absolute crap. What happened to real men? What happened to men who were the heads of the household back in the 50s and the 60s? Us women are sick of it. We're tired of seeing these beta males walking around acting so sensitive towards everything. It's ridiculous. Traditional masculinity needs to come back. It is not harmful. Real women like real men. Our generation is pathetic. Couldn't agree with you more. Shalom. Call Laila. Yahweh. Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim. Rekakadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honors and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson entitled, Where Are All the Good Men? Crowns of glory so that real men are standing out boldly for the word of God prophesying in these last days proclaiming the truth and declaring the end of a wicked kingdom and the beginning of a new holy righteous kingdom the sons of Jacob up and coming kings and priests. Let's start off here in Sirach chapter 1. Let's start reading around verse 11. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. So the sons of Jacob that have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures that fear the Lord are valuable. The Most High is communicating directly through the spirit of Yahweh Shai to the men of Jacob that fear him. Let's read it again. Verse 11, the fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. The fear of the Lord maketh a merry heart and giveth joy and gladness and a long life. So there is a select few on this earth that were chosen before the foundations of of the world to receive a crown of glory, the gift of immortality, and the gift of eternal rulership and dominion on the earth. The elect of the house of Jacob, the men that have been promised rulership. Let's go to verse 13. Whoso Feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last, and he shall find favor in the day of his death. What is this telling you? We don't die. We pass away or pass over. How can you find favor in the day of your death? That's because you come back and are rewarded for your deeds or punished for wickedness. Matter of fact, let's go to Sirach 11 and 25. Sirach 11, verse 24. Again, say not, I have enough 
and possess many things, and what evil I have hereafter. What evil shall I have hereafter? Let's read it again. This is a reincarnation scripture. Verse 24. Again, say not, I have enough and possess many things. And what evil shall I have hereafter? In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. So you're rewarded for good deeds or recompense for evil. So our spirits come back. Let's go back to Sirach chapter 1. Let's go back to verse 13. Whoso feareth the Lord, it shall go well with him at the last and he shall find favor in the day of his death. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. What does this scripture remind you of? Jeremiah. Let's get it. Favor in the womb. Predestination. Being foreordained. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Predestiny. Book of Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth, out of the womb, I sanctify thee, and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. These are mighty men, men of renown. That's heavy. Let's go back. Sirach, verse 14. To fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and it was created with the faithful in the womb. This is talking about the elect men, prophets, apostles, elders, teachers. These are men of renown that we read about in the Old Testament. And if you understand reincarnation, these men are back prophesying in the last days. Valuable men. Verse 15. She have built an everlasting foundation with men and she shall continue with their seed. So the same spirits of the prophets are subject unto the prophets back in their lots that are teaching this word daily and going out to the highways and byways every weekend. So everybody comes back in their lot. So the blessing follows you when you pass over and come back in the next life. You're rewarded for your great deeds, pushing this word and fearing the Lord. So these men are nobility, royal class. Or 16, to fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits. So we know a fruit we know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Let's go to that. Before we do, let's, yeah, let's go ahead and get that. Let's go to Matthew 7. Let's go 
go to verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring it forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Well, these men are producing good works. Let's go back to that. Verse 15. She have built an everlasting foundation with men and she shall continue with their seed. So the blessing of the father establishes the household. <coughs> Excuse me. Establishes the household. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the aristocracy, a ruling class, a governing elite. Let's go back to verse 16. To fear the Lord is fullness of wisdom and filleth men with her fruits, her good works, ability to teach, the ability to prophesy, to preach, which means to say before, the gift of the Holy Spirit endowed with the power to break down the mysteries of the kingdom and shrouded in Bible prophecy. I want to get something else. Let's go up. Back to verse 11. The fear of the Lord is honor and glory and gladness and a crown of rejoicing. Let's go to Sirach. 11, verse 5. <clears throat> Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of have worn the crown. So this is the governing elite. And you may not know it if you're not watching or if you don't have eyes to see. These are the men that are reproducing fruits every day that are doing these sit-down lessons, breaking down the scriptures, Many kings have sat down upon the ground and one that was never thought of have worn the crown. Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. Oh, this woman was asking, where are the men that have masculinity? We're reading about the great men that fear the Lord. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 5. <clears throat> the book of Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 4. Therefore, I said, surely these are poor, they are foolish, for they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. I will get me into the great men and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their power. But these have altogether broken the yoke and have burst the bonds. So these men know the way of the Lord and fear him. So the Most High has a hedge of protection around these men 
that fear him, that tremble at his word, and exalt and praise his name. These are the masculine men, alpha males, which means leaders. Let's go back to verse 5. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. So these men are separate, holy, severed from the ungodly, from evildoers, from the workers of iniquity. Let's go to Genesis. Before we do that, let's go to Isaiah 32. Verse 1. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So these men are going to be like a water reservoir in a desert, an oasis, a breath of fresh air, an ice cold glass of water on a sunny day or an extremely hot, weary day. These are the masculine men, the cream of the crop, and cream always rise to the top. These are the men you see out every weekend teaching and are doing daily lessons. Let's read it again, verse 2. So who is that king in verse 1? Yahweh Shai, followed by King David, followed by the men of the tabernacle of David. Elect men. Verse 2 again. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. A safe haven from judgment, from destruction. These are the men of the Lord that fear him and that he speaks to in dreams, in visions, through the Holy Spirit. Men that are given power to prophesy, which means to say before. How can you prophesy if you can't see, well, these men are gifted with the Holy Spirit. Spiritual eyes. And a woman was created to be a man's helpmate. Let's go to Genesis 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I, I will make him a help me for him. So we're going to go into that word, help me. So the man was made to lead, made to be the head, made to be a part of the Lord's tabernacle here on earth. Let's read it again. Genesis 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. Let's go into that word, help meet. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's age, 5828. Azer. 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 Help, secure, 
one who helps. No yell and scream at him, throw plates and glasses at him in silverware, and kick him out of the house. One who helps. Secure. Let's look up this word, secure. Are you kidding me? Sucker. Assistance and support in times of hardship and distress. So a woman is supposed to be a pillar of rest for the man. Let's see if we can find that. One moment. This is silly because you got to put it in apocryphal only. Here we go. Surat 36 and 24. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself. A pillar of rest. So this woman is looking for masculine men, but does she know her role? To be a help me unto this these men. These are high value men. And that's really that's only the men of the Lord. And understand this Bible. That can break down this Bible. That has the power of the Holy Spirit. He that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. So these masculine men are prophesying in these last days. They're here. Sirach 11, verse 5 again. Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of have worn the crown. Many mighty men have been greatly disgraced, and the honorable delivered into other men's hands. So the sons of Jacob are serving at the bottom, chosen to be up and coming kings and priests on the earth. They're back. The big elephant in the room came over to the Americas as slaves and are going to return in the kingdom to come with great glory, fame, power, and a new name under the tabernacle of David, under Yahweh Shai. We got next, Lord willing. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rekakadash, or Rakatham. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yashirala. Shalom.